Wednesday morning, it must be another episode of Cloud Talk Live. Everyone, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here for another Tuesday and another Cloud Talk Live. Going to be a great episode. So welcome to, uh, to everyone who's here. Uh, quick reminder, love for you to introduce yourself, who you are, and also where you are. This is a global audience. We've got Rebecca Penapento is here with us today. And uh, let's show off to her. Let's show uh, where all around the world you guys are coming in from. And uh, I'm so excited. You're going you're gonna to love this conversation. We've got some great stuff on the news. I uh, brought some cyber stories for you as well. But if you want to get a hold of us, uh, you can always do that by sending an email to solve at rackspace.com. It comes to the whole production team. We all get it. And boy, do we have a big production team today. They're shooting me from all sorts of angles today. So uh, with that, I want to remind you that uh, everything we do here at Cloud Talk Live is part of our, hey, look, it's me in reverse, uh, of our Solve program. Now, Solve is Rackspace's thought leadership program, and uh, and that's the program where we just really go out and help people be smarter about the technology that is available to them and that they can use in their everyday business lives, in some cases, personal lives. Now, currently, there's a podcast that's up with Josh Pruitt. I really need to update this slide because there's even newer ones. Now, you would know that if you had subscribed. So why don't you take this this second to pull out the mobile and, uh, and subscribe to Cloud Talk, where you'll get uh, the long-form uh, interviews that we do that are audio only. You'll also get the audio from these episodes, should you miss us one Sunday, one uh, Tuesday morning, which would be so sad, but at least you'd get to, to hear it anytime. Hey, we got Washington's here from San Antonio, the entrepreneurial world of San Antonio. Welcome. Glad that you are here today. Now, as I mentioned, we've got an amazing guest. Now, the guest that I've got here for you today is uh, is one Rebecca Panapento. Now, I got to know Rebecca back about four years ago when I was working at CloudReach. Now, I, that's right, I left Rackspace for just a little while. Now, when I left Rackspace to come back here, Rebecca came along and, uh, and we got to work here together for a little while until she went on to other amazing things. But uh, you may notice that something's a little off about, about the, the postcard that come up. That I call them the baseball cards. Normally, I put a title there. Normally, there's a logo for uh, where the person works. But none of that applies quite as well to Rebecca. You see, Rebecca is a multi-talented and disciplined person. She is. A, uh, a racer, a Spartan racer, doing those crazy races. She is a professional drummer. She is uh, has her own uh, podcast. She has her own, uh, she does consulting and keynote speaking as well. And of course, uh, her own, <clears throat> excuse me, video podcast called The Rebecca Penapento Project. So with that, I'd love to uh, welcome up to the stage, Rebecca, come on up here. Where Thank you, is Jeff. Rebecca? There's Rebecca. Good to see you. Hey, it's good to see you. How are you? Life is good. It's so fun to be on the show. It feels like very full circle. I know, I know. We uh, we got to hang out a lot and uh, go to go to battle a little, little together in uh, when we were at CloudReach and then uh, and then here at, at Rackspace. Now, you know, you've taken a lot of what you've learned, and you, I've never seen somebody be so aggressive in the best of ways about about going out and and accomplishing your goals. I mean, you're doing a lot of stuff, and uh, and a lot of that goes back to. Um, you know, you, you, your, your professional life started, you know, I showed a picture of drumming, you know, you started doing a, a whole lot of that in Nashville. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. 10 years in Nashville. That was definitely my first taste of entrepreneurship was moving there to be a big rock star, big dreams. Uh, got them crushed a little bit, uh, but you know, I learned, I had to sell myself. I had to get the gig. I had to show up and deliver on the gig and mm -hmm. then continue to grow that to find who the next band opportunity was, who the next artist I was going right. to support was. That's uh, that's a great lesson, you know. Even even in some things where you mentioned you got your dreams crushed a little, and you know we have that happen on a well, some cases a daily basis. But what do you, you know? You either let it be a crushing experience, or you let it be a, a, a learning experience, which clearly you've been doing. So you, what, what was it that you know that catalyst of like you know what I'm going to let music not necessarily be a hobby, but not something that pays all of the bills, and uh, and what drew you into into working in tech? Absolutely. So. 21 years old, which for a lot of people is, you know, getting out of college, figure out what you want to be when you grow up. But yeah. that was when I had hit my biggest gig ever. 10,000 people in the audience open for an artist I grew up listening to was like, this is it. I made it. The artist yeah. I was playing with was even Grammy nominated. So it was a high like I'd never had. I was up right. till midnight signing autographs, right? Got paid $150. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
I literally woke up the next day at the time was serving as a nanny to actually pay the bills. And I said, I'm out. This is not going to work. I've got yeah. to find a different career and was super drawn to tech and what that right. had to offer. That's fantastic. What a, again, way to learn from uh, what you're doing. We have a very similar uh, story in that regard. You know, I started in music as well under recording studio over in Houston, Texas. And, you know, it's it, Houston wasn't even a music city. Uh, you know, it's a, a big city, mind you, fourth largest, I think, at the time in, in the country. And, uh, you know, I had all this money invested in all of this gear. I mean, it was hundreds of thousands of dollars and I could still only pay or charge $75 an hour for the room. And, uh, and I had some friends who were computer consultants and, you know, on a low day, they would go in and but with a smile on their face and had nothing else they needed except a pencil to take notes. And they were, they were billing 150 an hour. And I thought, you know what? I think I'm going to pivot. I'm going to pivot. Mm -hmm. So interesting. So, so what was the first job in tech? Where did it, where did it take you? I was a IT project manager for Hospital Corporation of America in Nashville. Mm -hmm. Literally, actually the same way I got to Nashville. I Googled top tech jobs in Nashville, which and before had been top music jobs in Nashville. But it popped up. HCA was a great place to start your career, especially as it relates to IT project management. Right. Funny enough, the guy who brought me in, still a dear friend of this day, had a son who was a drummer. And so some drum covers that still live out there that are like 10 years old now, he shot for me as just like a really cool boss that showed, I want to invest in Rebecca Inc. as she also comes to start her career at HCA. It's pretty cool. That, that is really cool. And uh, you've had lots of folks who have come alongside you in a, in a either, you know, I think you work with some, some great mentors, both professionally, as well as just getting a great group of people around you. Um, what are some of the things that mentoring has, has done to help you know, either redirect you or focus you more? Oh, it has opened so many doors. Every job I've had has been following my network relationships, people I know, trust, and like, and that I want to work for. Yeah. Um, have always made sure that I had a really good foundation of a relationship and friendship with that person before diving in. But then just even um, emotional intelligence and self-awareness, like you need those people that you look up to, especially for me, I like people 15, 20 years older than me that will just tell me like it is and tell me when I'm like off base or like, that was really not a great decision. Like you need to rethink this. And right. I've, as I've spent more time in that place, especially with people I trust and I'm willing to be vulnerable with the self-awareness and emotional intelligence just continues to grow. That's awesome. So, so we of course worked together at a couple of companies. You went on to go to to Zoom and tell us tell us where you are now and uh, and what you're up to. Yeah, I'm super excited. I recently joined Peak to help them get their U.S. operations off the ground. Okay. We're really populated in the Manchester, UK area, but also mm -hmm. London and India. U.S. however is as of January of this year. So oh, we wow. really get to be ground floor, a well-funded startup or scale up is the, the term I'm coming uh, to know more and more within the world because it's not necessarily a, you know, bootstrap situation. Right, so I'm really right. excited to get them off the ground and we're focused on the commercial application of artificial intelligence, hmm. which is a category that we're really defining as decision intelligence. And we're leading that space to help our customers make really intelligent business decisions. That's really cool. So tell us a bit about the tech, as I understand it kind of sits on top of some of the common data stores we know and love. Correct. Yes. Uh, we get to partner closely with AWS, who's still very near and dear to my heart, as well as Snowflake and Braze. And we look to be an intelligence leader on top of what they're already doing to help retailers, manufacturing and CPG, again, make better decisions based on this data that they already have, mm -hmm. but they may not be utilizing to the best of their ability to drive revenue, to drive outcomes. So we come in to really help make an impact from an outcome and a business perspective so that those investments are even that much more valuable to the business. Isn't that amazing? You know, we've, we've both been in tech for a good long while, me longer than I care to talk about. Uh, but, but, you know, and I, I use this line a lot with customers and whatnot, but <clears throat> Data, data, you know, as it as it existed as part of applications, really was, it was a bit of a stepchild. You know, it was a, it was a necessary evil. You know, when a company wanted to come to Rackspace, even in the early days, hey, welcome, uh, Kamal. Uh, even in the early days, you know, when they were just coming into managed hosting, you know, we we had to account for their application, of course, and all the tiers that were involved. But then, oh, I guess we have to have a database as well, and that database was there just to make the application itself function, and so. 
But now what, what everyone is, is discovering, and Peak obviously is doubling down in this space, is that the real gold wasn't necessarily the application. The real gold is all of that data that they've already got. And as you think about moving that into these large common data stores, be it in Snowflake, be it in AWS, or pick your hyperscaler of choice, uh, then what you find is uh, the ability to connect that and play what if with the data really is so much easier and so much cheaper just to even experiment a little bit. And, uh, and so, so now with what, what you know, we see startups like what Peak is doing to help make better decisions with the data that, as Rebecca, as you said, that you already have. So, so how is it being used? What are, you, you mentioned it's, it's mostly in retail and CPG, con consumer packaged goods. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so we have 13 focus applications, which are how I like to describe it, AI models that are about 75% built. So we've already proven out that these models can help you with forecasting, mm. with understanding your audience, with making product recommendations. But then we come alongside our customers to complete those to make them look like the heroes. So these are folks in supply chain, folks in merchandising, you know, folks who are managing the e-commerce, mm. saying, what's the outcome you're looking to drive to? Here's our models already you know, in production. Let's right. complete them and make sure they're appropriate for the, what you're looking to accomplish. And again, make you look like a hero with X amount of increase in revenue, X amount of targeted ads, whatever that goal is. So then they get to go back to the business and say, look what we accomplished for this company. And they continue to expand with our other application stack. That's great. And you know, the thing that, that is exciting about that kind of thing is since the models are already, you know, mostly baked and they're able uh, ultimately then to start getting value in, I would assume, a pretty short amount of time. How how long is it from, hey, let's let's start a project to, hey, we're seeing real value out of this. When are they? When's that first aha moment? I love the aha moments. The aha moments. I love with one particular product to be able to drive time to value in about a five to six week time frame. Um, especially with maturity in a platform like Snowflake or maturity with their hyperscaler, that can be even accelerated more and more. Exciting. Well, um, you, one of the things you you started doing when you were here at Rackspace and have, have carried on through is uh, is is really focusing on how do you build you know you Rebecca as a brand. And I would imagine that there are a lot of people who are th sitting around thinking, I bet I could do that too. So what was what was the catalyst? How did you get started? You know, uh, obviously we all have day jobs, but you've taken you know this to an incredible level of you, you know your side hustle is you. So how did that get started? <laughs> Um, well, I will warn anybody looking to dabble in it, it is still a lot of work, uh, but it is very rewarding, kind of like back when I was playing music. It it allows a creative outlet for mm. me that I can't necessarily get in other areas. Yeah. Um, but it came out of, A, a super successful year at Rackspace. I was there during the COVID craziness, and the business was just a rocket ship. We were right. driving towards IPO, and you know we were taking in deals left and right. Um, so I was thankfully, in this really cool abundance mindset and abundance of opportunity, plus COVID making me be locked in my apartment. <laughs> so I'm like, well, Leave I've already been apartment with a couple of nickels to rub together and you'll find a way to spend it. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, well, uh, I already hit my quota. So now what am I going to do with all this free time with no social life? Um, so I got this idea actually from encouragement from more of these mentors and friends mm. to start interviewing my clients and prospects about digital transformation and build my personal brand through that, but also help me to, to sell and position what we were doing in Rackspace at the time. I got to highlight customer wins and I got to leverage it to get into relationships that otherwise, especially in COVID times, were really hard to access. That's really interesting, you know, because we we we've been focused a lot on that here recently. At, at, I'd say this year, this spring, at uh, with the, the Cloud Talk program because we were. You know, we were going live a couple, three, four, in some cases, four times a week. We were, the audience was growing, not at the audit, the clip we were looking for. We actually dialed back a lot of the frequency so we could do what you just mentioned, and that was reuse. You know, how do we utilize the assets and the stuff that we're creating better? How do we advertise it better? How do we clip it, cut it up and use it after the fact to ultimately then be able to figure that system out to, you know, at some point, maybe we'll ratchet it back up a little bit with these new systems in place. 
place. But, but um, you know, if you think about, you know, everybody, your day job, whatever it is that you're doing, you know, you do it so that your boss is happy so that you get a paycheck. I mean, if we make it as simple as possible, that's what's happening. But think about it in the creator mindset, like Rebecca did. Think about how you you can take what you're doing because there's probably somebody who would love to have your job. How do you help somebody else get to where you are? Even if you think you're low on the totem pole, um, there's somebody a little bit lower or would love to figure out how to get on that totem pole. Um, so Rebecca, that's that was really awesome. Did you have any, any conflict with, um, uh, with Rackspace or, or your other companies you've worked with saying, Hey, look, I'm talking to these guys. We're talking about this stuff live uh, and I'm going to do it. So, so there, or, you know, what, were there any hoops you had to jump through? Uh, at Rackspace, I had overwhelming support, which was just so cool. Even now, shout out to my boss who was there at the time. He's like the first person to comment and like on any new content I release, which is still super encouraging, really cool. Yeah. Tons of Rackspace people were like, hey, can I be on your show? Hey, you should talk to so-and-so about being on your show. I had just yeah, overwhelming support. And then as I've gone on to other companies too, they definitely didn't tell me in the interview process that's why they hired me. Right. But the way they were intrigued by it, people brought up my website, people are definitely taking notice. Uh, I believe it gives me an edge upon other just salespeople because it's yeah. a thought leadership approach. It's a you know trusted advisor approach that I'm willing to do on my own time. Isn't that amazing? Uh, and you know, if, and I th the way I always see that is that as as a person who's hired a few people in my day, is if somebody is willing to invest in themselves, like you have clearly invested in yourself, then you, you know, and it's in the marketplace that that we act actively need. Well, that's the kind of person I, I would want any day, at least somebody who's proven and shown, not that the person next to them won't do it, but you've proven that you you have done it. All right. So so now advice to the person who's now you've intrigued them. What's the first step? What do they do, Rebecca? How do they become mm -hmm. a mini Rebecca? I love it. Uh, well, as it relates to my show, it's been heavily guest oriented, asking mm -hmm. friends and mentors and people I think who are really neat to be on my show. Um, there's a little bit of coaching involved with helping them understand what's involved with being interviewed, things like that, if they haven't been in that world before. Uh, but it's a great relationship builder. It's so much fun. And like, you'd be surprised how many people you ask that will say yes. <laughs> Even like I've been surprised by the people that just offer the like, people I thought were not accessible in the past or I felt like they shouldn't give me their time because they've got X, Y, Z going on. They're like, hey, I'd love to be on your show. I'd love to support you. It's really cool to see this rocket ship. That's really awesome and fulfilling for me, especially because I'm so people oriented. Um, so by just asking, you'll be surprised at like who your you know army and your backup is. I think that people that if you're you're thinking, hey, maybe I really could go do this, you'll be surprised at the number of people who just want to be helpful and they just need a, somebody to come along and give them that opportunity to to get to do it. You're going to get some rejection. It happens, uh, depending on their schedule or whatever's going on. But also, most people, whether they admit it or not, they kind of want to get on a camera anyway, and uh, they want their moment in, in it to shine, and then they can send it to their mom or their friends or whomever, and let's say, look, I'm famous. I was on the Rebecca show. Yes. Hey, if you want to uh, find, your, find your program, how do they do that? Yes. Uh, I have a website, RebeccaPanapinto.com, or you can find me on YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram as the Rebecca Panapinto Project. You are the project. I am the project. That's so awesome. Uh, so uh, what's next for you? I showed a picture of Spartan Race stuff. Uh, what, what is, you gotta, you gotta give us that story real quick. Yeah, well, actually I'm back in Dallas this fall, so we gotta catch up, um, running a marathon of a Spartan. So it's literally, marathon? yeah, it's a 60K plus 60 obstacles. <laughs> Uh, so I'm in a hardcore training for that right now, but thankfully Dallas is one of their most flat courses. So I think I'll survive. Um, but that is taking a lot of focus on running, which is like my least favorite <laughs> physical activity. <laughs> That's so funny. Mm -hmm. um, and, and when are you back for that? That'll be October. So back in October, at least hopefully it'll cool down a little by then. It's been a little yeah. rough lately. Oh, I know when I was there recently, it was very hot. Awesome. Well, Rebecca, thank you so much for being on the program today. Always a delight. And uh, let's not let it be a couple more years before we get to hang out again. Sounds good. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs>
You bet. Have an amazing day. All right, folks. Isn't that amazing? Don't you love Rebecca? Um, be like Rebecca. Look, here's her quote right there. Now, you'd be surprised how many people want to say yes when you want to help, when they're, if you're asking them for help. So get out there and do that, folks. Get out and ask for some help. And, uh, and look, they'll be willing to do it. So as a reminder, all of this content is available over at Rackspace.com slash solve. We're not selling to you there. There's actually one thing I'm going to sell later. And it's not a product. It's the opportunity to come be here at Rackspace. Uh, so uh, subscribe. Subscribe. We'd love for you to subscribe. That takes us through, of course, our um, through the discussion. So let's get on to what's new in the news. And that, of course, is where I will share with you a few articles of what is happening and why it's important to you. And it starts with... Um, uh, with this. So data resiliency. You know, Rebecca and I were just talking about data. And uh, and so there was a great article that I found that talks about key aspects of helping make sure that data is actually resilient. And when we say resilient, that means, of course, it's backed up. It's it's recoverable. You set all the metrics. You've done all of the things. Uh, IDC says that uh, by 2025, 55% of organizations will have migrated their data protection system to a cloud-centric model. Now, there are some, this article talks about three hallmarks of what, uh, what will make this uh, a cloud-based solution for this more resilient, and that is a centralized model, meaning we're controlling this even when we're talking about it from, from, a, uh, from a, a multi-cloud perspective. We're controlling it with a centralized model of how we do it and a, a comprehensive control plane, a way to view the state of your state of data, the estate, uh, across whatever uh, clouds, public or private that you're using. And then of course, zero trust, always zero trust. Now look at this guy, he's happy. Now I don't know why he's happy, let me go back. Because the article, this is a picture from the article. The article is about a new Microsoft warning about the phishing attack that can uh, skip all of your defenses and has already hit 10,000 firms. Now, I don't know why this guy's happy unless he's the fisher and he's getting all of your data. So uh, what this they're talking about is an adversary in the middle attack that started uh, last September. Uh, and what they're actually doing is they are injecting themselves into what looks like a login for a, uh, for a regular website uh, service you might use, be it banking or whatever else you're going to log into. And then as soon as you've given your credentials, including the MFA stuff, then, um, uh, they're actually hijacking your session and go on and take your money or do whatever they're going to do. So, uh, Rebecca, thanks for being so on. So glad to have you. Um, so watch out for that folks. Uh, Oh, you're not supposed to see the green screen. All right, so that's what's going on in the news. Let's see what's going on from our cloud providers. Of course, it always starts with our friends at AWS. And uh, so they've got a new porting assistant from, uh, for .NET, which adds support for uh, assessing and porting your old VB.NET into .NET Core. Anything that can be done to help make sure or to help ease the process of, um, of moving uh, your workloads out into any of the cloud providers is good. And I love it when you see uh, providers like AWS in this case, helping you take the old stuff and moving it into the new stuff. Always a good thing. All right, thanks AWS for that. Let's go take a look at Azure for a second. Now, Azure has a public preview of new storage, uh, SSD uh, V2 disk storage. Now, this storage is is pretty incredible because you're you actually get to choose the a lot of the characteristics for how it's going to operate and not have to reprovision when you need it. Uh, tuning the IOPS, tuning the storage, tuning the speeds, all of that now available. So that's a preview item. Go check that out if you are an Azure person or an aspiring Azure person. Sign up for a free account at any of these providers and go learn some stuff. All right, now over at uh, at Google Cloud, Google Cloud users can now suspend a delivery pipeline. Also, uh, suspend meaning pause. You can also cancel the delivery pipeline. That's kind of cool. So a pipeline, of course, CI, CD pipeline for how you're deploying your goods and provisioning your infrastructure, because you should be doing that through code and not through the user interface. You can now manage that uh, in Cloud Deploy through their API. So you can either create a release, promote a release, roll back a release, redeploy, uh, and, and all of those sorts of things. So that's what's happening from the cloud providers. And that takes me over to the Rackspace job of the day. I told you I wasn't going to sell today, but I'm going to sell because this is a great place to work. Look at this building. So I'm, I'm right out here in the middle of, of what we call Main Street here at the castle, the mall that we have retooled here at Rackspace. Uh, right by the entrance, you've seen people coming and going. Uh, 
It is Tuesday. It is Taco Tuesday. So let's look at our job of the day. The job of the day is we are looking for big data engineers specifically for AWS. Now, this is a remote available job. It is a U.S. job. I'll tell you, we're hiring in other geos as well. But as a uh, big data architect in this role, you will work directly with customers and our team to help enable innovation through continuous uh, hands-on deployment across technology stacks. Uh, it, it, it's all data. Now, this seems to, of course, been the theme of the day accidentally as I put these this together in sections, whether it was Rebecca's conversation or, or into all of this. Uh, guys, it's all about data. If you have a question about, you want to get into uh, tech, but you're not sure what aspect of it, I'll tell you, you will be more than fine if you go into one of these two areas. The first, of course, data. Data is where the gold is. Second would be security. Boy, is there opportunity for security. So uh, with that, you can find that job over at rackspace.jobs. Just look for big data. Uh, and uh, there'll be lots of big jobs. There's also, we're looking for architects, we're looking for engineers. You may have heard about this offering here we have called Elastic Engineering. We need like a tons of these folks. Uh, great offering. If you are uh, into the clouds, uh, any of the three, uh, we're looking for folks all around the world. Just head over to rackspace.jobs and go find you one. All right, folks, you can uh, find all of this information uh, over at rackspace.com slash solve. You can subscribe uh, to the podcast from any of those providers down below. Feel free to link out to those at any point. Would love for you to check that out. And I would be, of course, extraordinarily remiss if I did not say huge thanks to AppDynamics, our sponsor of the program. They take full stack observability to its fullest extent. If you are creating applications that operate in the cloud and you want to be able to monitor from that end user all the way to the back end database and the calls that are going in and out of there and be able to tie that directly to your key performance indicators, your KPIs. Folks, AppDynamics is the way to go. Just head over to AppDynamics.com. Tell them Jeff sent you. I don't know if there's a field for that, but you know, you can tell somebody. Well, everyone, it has been great seeing you again today. And uh, you know what? We're going to be back next week and I've got a great guest for you. We're continuing our little mini women in tech. I've got Christine Kobelson, an ex-racker, always a racker. She just doesn't actually get her paycheck here. And, uh, and she has done some amazing things. Again, the common story, starting small and growing to be uh, a pretty powerful individual inside of, uh, inside of tech. So with that, everyone. I want to thank you for hanging out with us uh, on another uh, Tuesday morning. Big thank you to Rebecca Panapinto. Go check her out at RebeccaPanapinto.com and we'll see you next week on Cloud Talk.